HR or human resources is, is probably the most undervalued or devalued, you know, um, department, I guess, if you would say, in any organization anywhere. So the big question is this. How are leaders like you that recognize people and technology are the backbone of the company they're building continue to make progress when they have no clear idea on how to develop individuals and utilize technology in a way that helps them remain profitable? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is Tom and Michaela, and welcome to the Heart and Hustle podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Heart and Hustle episode number blah, whatever it is now. I don't really care. I don't know. I think it's 27, maybe. I think 27, 28. Or something. Whatever it takes. (laughs) Victoria will have our back on that. Yeah, I think she'll have her back on that, too. So, you know... This past weekend, um, last episode, we talked about this camper that we bought, this 34-foot yeah. thing that's sitting out behind us, like literally out the back side of this door mm-hmm. in this massively long driveway sitting there. Mm-hmm. And we just got back. We did. We did. We had a very relaxing, enjoyable two nights. It was nice. It was beautiful fall weather, and yeah. the yellow leaves were falling down. I took a most amazing picture of beans and chicken on the grill with the camper as a backdrop. <laughs> it was a good picture. <laughs> it was a good picture. <laughs> I don't think that's really camping. I, I think we've kind of went past camping. I don't think we even hit camping. And I think we also, we hit like we were glamping. glamping. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So our dogs liked it. Our dogs loved it. Dax they had, and Darcy had a nice time. They had a really good time. Yeah. Brand new camper. though. microwave doesn't work. Found that out. Mm, yeah, we did. Power yeah. issues. Got home, tore it apart tonight, and like, ah, oh, there's not a hot plug here. Yeah, that was kind of a bummer, but it we'll is. figure it out. It was a bummer. Yep. Did we get much Fireplace work done? worked. Fireplace did work. But how much work did we get done in glamping? We got quite a bit done. I thought we got quite Friday, a bit done, too. we worked all day, and I got a lot done. I'm not sure about you. I got quite a bit done, so Good. I think Saturday was a little questionable. Well, wow. It was Saturday, so, you Nice know. fall day. It was beautiful. <laughs> we go for a walk on Saturday afternoon. Is that Saturday afternoon? Yeah. Saturday afternoon, we go for a walk or Saturday morning, and uh, it's too cold to go back to the camper. <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> My fingers were falling off. You we were like, yeah. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Let's well, go sit in the camper by the fireplace. It was funny because there was this, there was this pickup truck that pulled up, and I, it was pulling this box. It was a, it was a, I don't know what it even was. It was, it, it was a huge box. And it was a box. The box on wheels and it had clown lights. Like It was a box on <laughs> wheels with circus lights. It had circus lights across the top, all flashing like three or four different colors. And then on the back of the pickup truck was the normal camper, you know, like the, I don't know, pickup bed camper ones or whatever. And there was these, this older couple just sitting out in front of it and all these crystal, all these like clown lights were going off and I was legitimately kind of scared. <laughs> I was a little nervous about what was happening right there. I'm like but turn the deadbolt, we're locking in. <laughs> they stayed to themselves, so it was all good. Yeah, it was all good. You know, one thing I want to talk about tonight, I don't know if I want to make this a serious podcast or not, but, you know, we were sitting inside the camper, you know, talking about work and probably we shouldn't be talking about work inside the camper, but we are. <laughs> and... You're frustrated, and I was frustrated for you, and I was trying to figure out, you know, how to internalize this issue, and I don't know, like, at times, what to even do, mm-hmm. and I, I think it global, I, not globalizes, but I think every profession is like this, and I want to just, like, bring it out, and, you know, this isn't obviously one of the questions from the viewers, which is here tonight, but it's just like, you know, how, how do organizations, and how do companies, or how do people... Um, come to a point at which they know their services are are of value. They know that they are experts in that field and they know they have a tremendous amount of people that um, respect them in the marketplace and they know that they provide a ton of value, but there's certain individuals and certain people that think that profession or that area of expertise is really, uh, should be free. Like, of no charge, like they just don't value it. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like you can do or there's nothing that I can do and there's nothing that anybody can do to really convince that person that there is value there, but they still ask those questions, which, you know, you as a person, you're digging back through years and years and years and examples of expertise at which you've learned, acquired, 
and are accumulated over, you know, the vast couple decades of your life. And people still have no value of that. Mm-hmm. And we can like go across any industry and, you know, the top three that we deal with are obviously HR, AKA human resources, mm-hmm. or human resources, AKA HR, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, <That one. laughs> media slash marketing and IT. Mm-hmm. And I can speak from the IT world, you know, something that may crash or die or some catastrophic event may happen. And largely you can walk in, put your cape on, save the day. You know, you may work 20 hours to recover years and years and years worth of data because if someone did something stupid mm-hmm. and then you send them the bill and they're like, wait a minute, this is too much money. Mm-hmm even though it may be for a few thousand bucks, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. We had really good soup tonight, and that was like, <laughs> <laughs> was it chicken? Yeah, my Sicilian <laughs> chicken. I just tasted it. It was <laughs> not good. Gross. There was like a noodle. <laughs> Are you it sure wasn't, was it a Skittle? <laughs> no, it, well, part of a Skittle, yes. <laughs> but it was a noodle. I felt the noodle. <laughs> That is wrong. It that is wrong. Bad. I need to get get up and get a drink right now, but there's like there's nothing there, so I'm gonna fight through this thing. Wow. So like, wow. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but back to the show. Um, but inside, inside the HR world, for as long as we've been doing this, I'm coming to the point that like HR or human resources is, is probably the most undervalued or devalued, you know, um, department. I guess if you would say in any organization anywhere there is literally like close to close to zero or if not zero respect given to the field of hr instead of of any company and i can say this because you know we have clients that truly love what you do but they have zero respect for the profession of what you do right they think it's just easy or like you know you have a magic bullet that can fix something that they're having a problem with When at the end of the day, they have people issues. Well, and that's the problem. I mean, and we've talked about this a little bit on some of our past episodes, but there isn't a magic bullet. You can't walk in, flip a switch, and oh, look at that. Everything's working again. And most of what I do takes time, and it takes change, and it takes forethought, and it takes patience. And... um, people don't have time or want to deal with that. They want to be able to fix it and move on or just not even recognize that it's there. Um, I think HR most of the time gets (coughs) hit with all the just daily paperwork, you know, payroll and compliance and finances and this and that, and they get stuck in this nobody else is going to do it. So HR will do it Mm -hmm. type of world, the things that can get done, the things that have to get done, but nobody else wants to do. And then when it comes to strategic planning or, you know, dealing with people issues, dealing with those issues are hard. There isn't a magic switch. There's not a magic bullet. You can't flip that switch and make everything okay. And, Um, even even though it's one of the most important aspects of a business, you can't feel it, touch it, see it. You can't make change instantaneously. And so people just push it off and push it back to the back burner. Right. And I think it means like, depending on the executive and what you're dealing with, you know, if you're dealing with someone that can deal with the gray, you know, they understand, I think a little bit more, Mm -hmm. but if you're dealing with a type A type person that, You know, things are usually fixed or they're broken. They're on, they're off, they're right right or they're wrong. They have no ability to even comprehend what HR really is. Mm -hmm. And so now they're faced with dealing with people issues or people problems or, you know, employee issues. And and they really don't know how to react. They're not equipped to to deal with the problem. But they're not willing to let anybody else help with that process either. No. And inside their world, they're used to things being fixed with, you know, a turn of the wrench or, you know, they're used to things being off or on and, and people is largely not that issue. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort and really hacking everyone's, or I guess every employee that you may have. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people will say, hey, let's give bonuses or let's throw more money at this person or at the, these people and they'll stay. Or some people say, hey, we're going to pay them less, but we're going to make them super feel like they're super valued. Well, both instances are going to be wrong because there's going to be parts of individuals that may be okay with being paid below standard, but they have a ton of extra perks. Mm -hmm. There's other people that may have a family of four, maybe a family of five. And you know what? The extra perks don't mean anything because they need cold, hard to cash in their mm -hmm. mid, you know, mid thirties, I guess, if you will, to raise that family. Mm -hmm. So well, it's just and that's different. exactly why people don't like to deal with it because there is no right answer. No. And I mean, what do you do in situations where there is no right answer? And so people don't want to deal with it. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to definitely don't want to put more money towards it. No. And so you get stuck in this perpetual cycle of this isn't working. I need help. But no, I don't want it. You know, yeah. that whole cycle of it kind of leads me into the first question tonight that we have. And this was actually last week. We probably should have talked about this last week, but we never really got time. But um, the question came in says, you know, you talk about the importance of HR and employees getting along. But how do you implement that when everyone talks about everybody? Sorry, I put you in the spot again. <laughs> I mean, you know, yes, you want everybody to get along. You want you want this kumbaya feeling of you have a really good culture and a really good relationship there. But, you know, you're dealing with people that they just talk about everybody together. And, you know, we've seen it in our worlds. We have clients that have tried to implement this a matter of policy or push procedure where they say, you know, you are forbidden to talk about anything with salary bonuses or anything amongst any of your coworkers. This is private. You cannot do this. But we all know hammer down that's not legal right you can't do that you can't do that yeah i mean that's where it's important for leaders to build that um transparency you know to be upfront and forthright and show the okay. same respect that you expect everybody else to show one another um it's not an easy situation. You find it everywhere you go. So. No, it's not. Well, it's kind of like in my world too, and I obviously can't attribute this to HR issues, but you know, there's there's some organizations in which we work with where they can get away or you know get by with using, I would call substandard equipment and um, infrastructure, networking technologies that are maybe not up to par, um, but it's working for them. And there's others where they just can't. And, mm -hmm. But those others where they can't, they try to get away. And we have clients right now that, you know, they, they try to go what I would consider on the cheap on providing equipment to individuals that are pretty high-end type individuals that are working on extremely processor intensive applications mm -hmm. and getting them to understand, you know, it's not about selling more equipment. That's the last thing I'm concerned about, mm -hmm. but it's about providing the resources and the tools to their employees to, to be as efficient as possible. And yes, it's going to cost an extra few hundred bucks to do this, mm -hmm. but to go and purchase substandard stuff to make this stuff happen just doesn't work. Well, and that's one of the things that is really important to employees is that they have the equipment that they need to do their job and to do it well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a difference between just having unrealistic expectations and being spoiled, right. but yet having the <laughs> equipment you need to be able to do your job efficiently <laughs> too. And that, I mean, from a business perspective, why would you want to offer substandard equipment when that's going to slow your employees down? You know, you want them to be able to work efficiently. So it's the cost of doing business, put that money up front and yeah. everybody will be a lot happier. But I mean, I get it. Business is hard. It's we're going through strange times financially. Everybody's kind of scared about what to expect. Funds are being cut. Everything's getting more expensive. It's just, it's it's hard to deal with. Yeah, I also think that some of the leaders out there, some of the organizations or the CEOs, um, you know, these past couple of years have been tiring. I think a lot of them are just tired mm -hmm. and they're For worn sure. out. And it's it's not so much about not wanting to spend money on this stuff. I think they're just really worn out of not having the ability or the desire to have to go out and generate the sales or the revenue needed in order to fund that equipment mm -hmm. because they're just worn out. They're just beat. 
Mm-hmm. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I get it. So I mean, it's 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 a lot to keep up with as a business owner. It's a lot to keep up with with making your customers happy and making your yeah. employees happy and making everybody happy. How do we do it though? What do we do? We can't make everybody happy. We don't. We never will. We we do. What, I mean. If somebody needs something and they ask us for it, we typically we've, get what they need. We've never said no. I mean, we get. No. Re- I mean, I got a request last week from Ben Ding, our IT services director here, and and he's like, "Hey, we could really use this as a team." And it was like, you know, a couple hundred bucks for five different things, you know, whatever it was. And I said, "Yeah, no, no problem. It's always no problem. It's mm-hmm. never been no. It's like um, if you think a, a 2022 MacBook Pro is what you're going to need to make your job better, not to make you happy." But to make you more efficient, absolutely, let's do it. It's three grand, but let's do it. Well, I mean, there's like a no nose policy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever can be and enhance your productivity. And there's the key. But mm-hmm. on the flip hand side, just don't want it because you want to keep up with the Joneses either. Right. And we've never had that problem. No, we don't have that problem. So, but of course, we don't waste money on things either that we don't waste money on. So, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy like real lighting fixtures or you can buy the ones off Amazon that look pretty darn close. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Hmm. You have to comment about your shirt though. You like my shirt? I like your shirt. Where did we get the shirt? Oceanside, California. It's so super soft. It is. It's like the most comfortable. In the label. We'll take a picture of it here. The label just cracks me up. It is pretty funny. How we'll much take was? A how much, we're, and we're not going to say how much this this uh, hoodie was, but put down in the comments on how much you think. Actually, put down in the comments on how much you think this hoodie was, and whoever gets the closest is going to get one. We'll ship one to them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I was not happy that you spent that on this hoodie. It's awesome though. It, it's like completely '70s throwback. I know it is. It reminds me of kind of the bowling shoes with <laughs> me. Remember the brightly colored bowling shoes? No. In this, you don't remember those? No. Okay. Yeah. Totally reminds me of the 70s, 80s. I like it. I do too. It's comfy. There you go. The last question I'm going to see here tonight. I'm going to read this first. I haven't read it. Hmm. This is a good one. Okay. Not about HR this time. Yay. <laughs> we'll make it quick though. Okay. Go we can do it. quick. <laughs> Does social media have a positive or negative impact on one's mental health? Yes. Um, you want my honest opinion? It's not a yes. It's a positive or negative impact on a person's mental health. A small percentage, yes. A very large, I'm sorry, a large percentage. What was the question? Read it. I got to state this right. Does social media have a positive or negative impact on one's mental health? It has a pretty small positive effect, in my opinion. A pretty large negative effect. Explain. I think there's a lot of wasted time. I think there's a lot of comparison. I think there's a lot of false information, all of which are negative on your mental health. But every once in a while, you'll find something out there inspirational, kind of Like that Sicilian funny, chicken like, soup that I tasted earlier. Right? Pinterest, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I think, I think it is largely at this point causing more harm than it is good. That's my opinion. I probably agree with you. I, I think depending on the maturity of the person viewing the posts or the feeds that are out there you know if you're a 12 year old girl that's concerned or 12 year old boy concerned about your self-image instagram is not the place to hang out no so but i think even if you're a 60 year old grandma it still has negative effects i mean it's there's just no look what look what's going on in the marketplace right now there's fake news everywhere we all get it. Everything's being fact checked for everything. What is real? What is not real? Fact checked. Who does the fact checking? I mean, that is. That I can't even trust that fact checking is actually fact checking. No, I don't. 
I agree with that. I mean, there's just, there's so much misinformation out there and there's so much just, I don't know. There's so many things that are not healthy about it. It's kind of concerning and. Would you ever abandon it? Yeah. So right now you'd go in, like walk out of here and delete Instagram, Pinterest. Maybe not Pinterest. <laughs> they have good that's recipes. where you get all your. That's where I get my resumes. I get my news from Yahoo News. But I guess there, there that is. <laughs> yeah. But to walk in right now and actually remove Instagram, remove Facebook, remove those platforms, could you live without it? Yes, I could. I think I could too. I think it would. I think we'd go through some withdrawals. Sadly mm-hmm. enough, which it's pathetic that I say that, but. For so many years, we have been so used to checking it constantly and scrolling. And every spare second we have, we're like checking to see what's on Facebook or what's on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I think we go through some withdrawals, but I think it would not last long. And I don't think, I think well, we'd think, probably be healthier for it. I think there was a time, and I think that time may still be here a little bit, but when you advertised on these platforms, you know, there was definitely some results. You know, you'd post an ad on Facebook for, you know, your product or your service or Instagram or whatever. And there's, there was a point when people were like, oh, this is pretty cool. But I think now people are getting so, uh, I mean, they're, Inundated. they're just scrolling past it. Like, it's, don't even just, show me buy now, shop now, do this now. I don't want to deal with it. It's just constant, 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 constant. It is. I mean, Facebook, Instagram, all of it is nothing but advertising and TikTok is getting not, get, a lot of ads now too. shop now is. buy now do this now yeah well, TikTok has some super funny stuff but TikTok has some super raunchy stuff too yeah. like completely inappropriate and there's no filter there's no way to filter it no so it's yeah you know, what's happening is TikTok is becoming a news source for a lot of folks they're, they're seeing a 15 second clip right or wrong but they're duetting or you know stitching these things together and they look and sound pretty darn real Right. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to challenge you. Pick a platform, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Well, let's not do Snapchat. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. By the next episode, tell me which one you have deleted from your phone within five minutes of walking out of here and see if you can last that long. And I'll do do the same. You will? I'll tell you which one I deleted, yes. <laughs> But are you actually going to delete it and like live without it for a week? I think from a personal standpoint, I can do that. Not from a business standpoint. I well, that's good. where do you draw the line? I don't know. That's a good question. That's that's yes. We where manage like line? we manage these platforms on behalf of our clients. I mean, we mm-hmm. have you know, a gazillion accounts out there that like we manage on the behalf of them to help drive revenue for the source, you know? So it's, it's difficult when you're using it for that purpose. I get it, but you can't stop to think golden doodle lovers, (laughs) golden doodle lovers and instant pop people, (laughs) golden doodle lovers, instant pop people and trans am people. I kid you not. You could have a product of $1 each and sell Two million devices, whatever it is, for two million bucks. I bet I could do it and ca- have something dedicated to Golden Doodles, Instapot, and Bandit Runners, Transammers, or whatever it is. I will guarantee you, <laughs> sky's the limit because these people are literally nuts. Like, no offense, but they're crazy. The amount of of dedication and passion for you know Instapots, the Instapot lovers of America has, <laughs> or the Golden Doodle lovers of America has against their darn goal. I mean, I posted a picture of you this weekend camping with our two dogs a gazillion likes yeah much more than we get on our business pages yeah we post an inspirational (laughs) quote about whatever nothing no but our golden doodle but our golden doodles it's a rock star we should create darcy and dex i I, I bet they'd i bet they'd have more followers than us they would in a heartbeat (laughs) in a heartbeat Mm, that's what you get for having fur (laughs) why'd you kick me because I know inappropriate number 72 for All today mm-hmm. so, anyways like or comment below again how much was this sweatshirt I want to know to the dollar send one your way um, see if you can guess okay I saw the receipt I don't think we even paid for the bill yet <laughs> probably not anyway. it's probably still on our credit card it is which gets paid off monthly by the way yeah of course 
Of course. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Talk to you guys later. And uh, ciao. Whatever that was. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>